What up, everybody, and welcome back. The Gen Report. Brian, Marvel Update, CinemaCon. We got Deadpool, Cap 2, Brian. I mean, sorry, Cap 4. And the talk of... Brian, this is when, you know... We've been talking about this for a long time. How they do it, Brian? Because... If you want automatic, RDJ is going to give you automatic money. He will bring people to, to, the, to the theaters unless we hear word of you messing it up. Because, Brian, I'm not too fond of the idea of the possibility of them bringing an RDJ from a different multiverse. Why? Because that's not the same RDJ. I'm telling you, the only way you bring him back, Brian, Life Model Decoy. He said it. He said it. Uh, let's talk about Deadpool. So they screened Deadpool footage about nine minutes, I believe, at CinemaCon. And uh, Kevin Feige, you know, was dropping f-bombs right and left as a sort of oh yeah they're very deliberately saying i can do this now because it's r-rated and deadpool is part of the mcu so he went on this sort of like expletive laced tongue-in-cheek tirade about um about the character um <laughs> with the lead of it's effing amazing and i'm allowed to say that now because it's rated r so yeah. they're all kind of having a good time with it yeah. um the they said that all the footage was screened that they screened is in the from the first half of the film so nobody has seen a shot from the second half of the movie, let alone the, the final set piece. Um, but we got more of the fourth wall breaks. You know, this is gonna be one of those, I, I we talked about this. To me, this is gonna be a Goldilocks situation. Like there is a limit, I think, to how many times you can go to this well in, over the course of two, two and a half hours. They clearly are gonna test the limits on this. Yeah. So. Just as an example, we you know you've seen the Super Bowl trailer. You know the things that are in there. Mm -hmm. In this footage that was, you know, listed in here, some of the notables were you know Wade Wilson saying, "quote Cocaine is the only thing Kevin Feige says is off limits." <laughs> "quote Suck it, Fox, I'm going to Disneyland." "quote Friends don't let friends leave the house looking like they play for the L.A. Rams." And here's the big one: "quote Does this really mean loads of gratuitous cameos?" <laughs> Combined with what you've already gotten from the Super Bowl teaser, like there's a lot of this Disney MCU, you know, trying to t turn the negative vibes around the IP into a running joke in this movie. They're um, trying to do a Eminem, make fun of themselves so you can't make fun of it and you laugh along with us. And yeah, we'll see how successful that is. But um, I think there's clearly the buzz is there. And uh, I think there's no question. Like I said, I just... I never had any doubt this movie is going to be a huge opening of weekend event. And it just, yeah. it'll just come down to like the same old question. Can it be a classic? Our first shot of Hugh Jackman in the masked costume as part of some publicity thing for a piece of merchandise. So now we've seen that, uh, which I kind of wish I could unsee, but that, that's out there. And we're just kind of at this point waiting for this thing to drop. I, you know, there'll be one more trailer, obviously, but I almost mm -hmm. feel like they don't need it. Brian, if I see... This is the problem here. You keep showing us stuff, and a lot of the things that you show us, you're really not showing us any action sequences or anything. You're showing us a little bit of things here and there, but just we're, we're hearing a lot of the same dialogue. If I go to the movies and uh, the joke shouldn't be, shouldn't hit the same. You know, it shouldn't, it shouldn't hit different. Yeah, I've heard the joke before, like. It, that Marvel Jesus line? Yeah. I don't want to hear that in the movie theaters, yo, because that's that's not going to be funny, and we've seen it. I think a few of these won't be in the final cut. I hope not. I think that would be very... That's very common. Like, a lot of trailers, right? There's shots that don't make it to the final cut. This would be a perfect movie to actually use the trailers to put some cutting room floor material out into the public domain and not have it be in the movie. There was also Cap 4, right? Yeah, obviously, this one, they need, a, they need to kind of get the... You have the, this the was shade like off of this something. one a little bit. Hey, it's something. So they they finally showed a sizzle reel and some footage really featuring 
um, Harrison Ford's Thunder, Thunderbolt Ross talking down to Anthony Mackie. And at one point, literally saying to him, do your job. You're not Steve Rogers. Um, so setting up conflict there between between the two of them. And Mackie's been talking a lot because he's got his own show on Paramount, a uh, sci-fi show based on a video game. I think that's coming out around this time. Mm-hmm. So he, he's been talking both at CinemaCon and in regards to that. And so he's pitching this idea of... Who's pitching? Mackie, Anthony Mackie. Okay, okay. It's good. Like he's almost pitching why does this movie exist coming off of Falcon and Winter Soldier? Like basically trying to answer the question of like, okay, if you saw that show and you however you felt about it, why do we need a movie um, about this? And so he kind of says, quote, one of the biggest conversations we had from the beginning was for this not to be part two of Falcon and Winter Soldier. This had to be its own movie with its own story and its own characters. Even though I've been in so many of them and have seen it all, the opportunity for Sam to really establish himself as a true action star and Avenger comes with this movie. Then he says something kind of interesting where they asked him basically about like what kind of homework you have to do before you see this. And he said, this movie is a clear reset. It reestablishes the idea of what this universe is and what this universe is going to be. With these movies, you're getting a clear new branding of what Marvel is headed toward the same way they did with Winter Soldier. There's a lot in that, depending on how much you want to unpack it, especially with the rumors we've heard about how politicized the first cut was that people hated and knowing that they're basically reshooting a ton of this and knowing what Bob Iger said, like he's kind of dancing around that idea of like basically they're trying to remake how they make the movie. And they've cut out some of that super society stuff. It sounds like, that's what I'm saying. It does feel like you're, whatever movie we see is literally going to be like version 2.0 of whatever <laughs> movie everyone signed on to do. I heard that there was a scene that Isaiah Bradley uh, goes nuts and shoots people in, in, in some court or something like that. Oh, interesting. Okay, well that that uh, would be that would that might be a little tough for his museum memorial future. Know, right? if he goes like, into I'm that. like, D- dude, wh- why you gotta? Go- why he gotta go crazy? <laughs> you know? I'm tired of them taking our leaders. I know you are too. And it's like, word, you memorialize this dude. Now he's doing that, yo. Yeah, why y'all doing that to him? Upsetting, man. We heard about some of the. The, the press screening stuff or the initial screening stuff. Like I'm, I'm kind of out on this movie until they, they yeah. drag me back in. I need to see some, I need to see a real reason to get excited. And I, and despite some good rhetoric here, I'm not, I'm not there yet. Brian, what are your thoughts on art? Tracy is like, <laughs> I would let Tracy speak for himself in terms of what, how he feels about RDJ coming, coming back, possibly coming back, possibly coming back, Brian. But it's like Marvel ain't stupid. They know they can't make a billion dollars with some of the OGs. You kidding me, Brian? With what they got on the roster right now, you think they're gonna you you think you're gonna make you're not supposed to make a billion dollars anyway. How much did they make with Endgame? Three. Three billion. So if that's your goal, then you need our DJ. You pop, you probably our DJ is gonna be like, well, I need cat. Go get me cat. Right? So your thoughts, Brian? Well, there's several layers to this. First off, let's rewind the clock. Remember when RDJ gave that acceptance speech on the award circuit when he was winning all the awards and everyone lost their minds about how he was like pissing on Marvel? And I told you at the time, I was like, RDJ, his tongue is always in his cheek when he talks. He doesn't <laughs> yeah. really he's not really shading the role that saved his career. Don't worry. He's mm. he's having fun. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's picking up hard. <laughs> And come to find out, now that he's got all the hardware, including the Oscar, he says he'd happily return to the role of Tony Stark, saying, quote, it's too integral, a part of my DNA. The role chose me. And then he goes on to say, you never bet against Kevin Feige. He's like the house. He always <laughs> wins. There you go. All I got to say is welcome back. Now what? Yeah. So let's talk about the other part of this, which is that's great. He says, the phone lines are open, the door is unlocked. There is a price of admission. Certainly. (laughs) And it ain't low. (laughs) As we know, he was the one who basically broke the bank in negotiating the deals he did the first time around. 
I find it hard to believe he's coming back for you know discount Anything now that he has that. an Oscar yeah, yeah, on his yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so what? Disney's got to figure out what I said to you when you sent me this. But I said it, it tells me that the weight of the bags Disney's throwing at him is starting to get in the ballpark. <laughs> that's, what, that's what it tells me. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. I do think this, Pablo. If they figure this out, the the biggest thing that RDJ buys them is the credibility to get everyone else they want back. Because right now, everyone in public appearances is got cold feet, and justifiably so. They're all done with the role. They're all happy. They don't want to touch their legacy. As in, Marvel's slumping, and we don't want to be part of a sinking ship. That's what that's code for. Mm-hmm. If RDJ says, I'm back in, and Marvel has convinced me there's a way for me to credibly be back in, now I think everyone else takes the call if Disney wants to make it. And that's probably the biggest impact that Downey has is that like it opens, it reopens all the doors that Disney or Marvel might want to open. Certainly. Because everyone else knows that they can't do it. Oh, they, not that they can't do it, but it won't be the same. And to relive that feeling that, that you got with uh, Infinity War and Endgame, you just want to bring everybody back, bring back that same energy, bring back that same excitement and, and curiosity to do or tell this story, whatever story you decide to tell. But, but we, ha- I'm just going to say, so I wouldn't, it's, it, look, it, this would take a long time for this to really come to fruition. But we have an example before us right now of it working, which is X-Men 97. Like, there it is. They're touching the sacred legacy of characters in a show, and they're finding a way to make it work with the same, predominantly the same voice cast. I grant it, animated live action, I get it, it's different. But if enough time passes and you have the right idea and the right writer, and you can find something that credibly says, hey, I can reunite the original team for a new adventure that is very much in the spirit and the essence of what we did. I mean, is it hard? Yes. Is it impossible? No. And we're seeing it. But I think it's way off. I mean, I think it's like year. I mean, we're talking even Downey saying that today, I don't think you see him on screen as any version of Tony Stark, live model or decoy or otherwise until oh, I think 2029, 20, 2030. It's, it's, it's a ways off. But How old is he? Uh, he's well into his 50s now. That's what I'm saying, Brian. We can't wait for like ever, right? No, but that's what I'm saying. Like, if you're going to bring these guys back, they're all going to be pretty old. So like, you're going to have to make a credible reason for why as aged version of their characters like that. As I said, he always likes to have fun. He always likes to say stuff, but I, I do believe like he knows this is the role that saved his career. Literally, Certainly. he is not going to ever put it in a, in a coffin. Like it's yeah, his yeah, role yeah, yeah, and yeah, he's yeah, 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 making yeah. sure like, don't, don't, don't even think about it. That's mine. That suit is mine. That's Harrison Ford talking that same talk when referring to Indiana Jones. A hundred percent. That's the perfect comparison. Brian, some more uh, stuff came out of CinemaCon, Brian. Uh, Transformers, G.I. Joe, Brian. We knew it was coming. It's like, <clears throat> in my, listen, G.I. Joe is already horrible. You got a second shot with Snake Eyes. And you blew it! You blew it! They're over. Th- they're really over three. Oh, for three, okay, with what? Well, I'm saying the Steven Summers G.I. Joe original movie. Ah, yes. G.I. Joe Retaliation, which is better, but I think it's better, but it's not very good. Yeah. And then Snake Eyes. Have they mentioned anyone who is uh, a part of this and, and that's going to be developing this? Well, I'm assuming Stephen Cable, who directed Rise of the Beasts, which is where they planted this seed in the first place. I'm assuming yes, yes, yes. he's the director. I'm assuming what he'd be the director. What do you think of that movie, though? I mean, it's, it's like average popcorn entertainment i thought it, i mean look we were hyped for it when we saw the trailers it didn't live up to what we hoped for it to be nah. it's like the third best transformers movie it's behind bumblebee that's not saying much. right it's like behind bumblebee in the original like those are, it's the third okay, yeah, the yeah, third yeah, best yeah, transformers yeah, yeah. you're right that's a low bar i i don't i mean am i the only one who doesn't th- who thinks gi joe is not that hard <laughs> like they, I, this is what classic case of hollywood over complicating something that's actually pretty easy to do well yeah yo yeah <laughs> You don't need all this 
craziness that you try to do. Yeah, I get it. It's GI Joe and it's high tech stuff, but yeah, the way they, the people that they hire, the the names that they hire, it's like this. This is the type of movie, Brian, that you take the approach what Marvel did in terms of casting and casting and it's casting the right actors. Yeah. Not just casting names in, 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 in roles. When I see these guys, I gotta believe that's Duke. I gotta believe these are those characters that you want me to believe those characters to be. And uh, so far, and even so, if they were able to do that, Brian, you gotta tell a, fan, a, a great story, a, a decent story. You don't have to be, just go a level above Expendables and you'll be all right. <laughs> you know what yeah, I'm saying? I, I don't. That's what I mean. Like to me, it's like, wh why do you need huge names? Like, yeah. make a good movie with lesser known characters who look and inhabit the parts better, where you don't have the baggage of like, oh look, there's Channing Tatum, who was terrible as Duke. I'm sorry, horrible. Like, yeah. like, I'd rather have somebody I don't know, <laughs> like a character actor. You know, you are not alone in the in the in the, the chat well, and Tatum hate. I mean, look, I'm, I'm the wrong person to ask anything. As I said, like you know, if I see Channing Tatum's you know gamut cameo, I can't wait to savage that. I can't wait, I can't wait. I'm just yeah, I can't wait. To, I can't wait to do the yeah. opposite of X Men '97. I won't remember your name. That's good. It's that character. But, uh, but, yo, Brian, Brian, <laughs> he better not say it in the in the movie. Remember it. I, he better not ruin the oh, already what has been great. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't think so. But, but yeah, I'm just saying. Let's let's do unknowns and let's focus on making, you know, a, a, a credible, fun, like a credible, good, like military drama. Like do base it on something that's already been successful. Do like Black Hawk Down, but with Joes and Cobras. Do Magnificent Seven, but with Joes and Cobras. Like just that's all you got to do. <laughs> that's it. That's it. It's that's usually that the pitch. Pro that's probably that's the what pitch. I'm saying. And by the way, if we get to our Star Wars thing, we're going to talk about that because we, you know clearly somebody was listening to us when they made a pitch. We'll talk about that in a second. But that's it. One sentence. That's what you want to sell people on. And like, yeah. GI Joe is not that hard. There's so many characters. Just pick a few of the better known ones. Brian. And like, yeah. You know what I would do, Brian? I would take those executives into a room. And turn on Winter Soldier. Yeah, exactly. Watch that, gentlemen. Give me that. I mean, which a lot Cobra. of that story could be a G.I. Joe story, by the way. Exactly, young. <laughs> exactly. All the high tech stuff and all, all the stuff that they were doing is like, yo, it's right there. Just <laughs> change things up a little bit. Change a few words and stuff. <laughs> That's what I mean. A few circumstances and you good. That's what I mean. I don't understand sometimes when Hollywood is just like, we got to have these backstories and we got to do this and this origins. And I'm like, no. But it's not <laughs> even the backstory. It's just the set pieces. They go overboard, yo. And what it's supposed to be. And it's like, it doesn't have to be crazy, yo. I don't know. And if you want to build a world, don't give me everybody in one movie. That's what I'm saying. Like, why? So now I'm going to be introduced to Duke and Flint and Lady J and Cobra Commander. But like, what? They're going to be riding and flying inside like Optimus Prime and Starscream. Like, why? <laughs> I don't need that. Like, it'll sell toys, which I guess you know. <laughs> that maybe that's the only the person point. that's happy about this is John John Capia. <laughs> Brian, uh, Star Trek Origins, Brian. What is this movie about? I, I didn't hear anything oh, just, about it. Yeah, so we, we've kind of segued into Paramount. So let's do a couple of Paramount things real, real quick. Uh, so Star Trek has been stuck in movie limbo forever with Chris Pine cast is kind of not really going to come back or whatever. But then they announced, okay, they're going to do this new film, which is like the origins of Star Trek, but it's now like their new launch. So the new launch for a new movie franchise with new characters, everything, wiping the slate clean, but it is supposedly like canon of the Enterprise and stuff like that. So I was just like, oh, anytime they, they want to try that, that's interesting to me. So, so is, it the is, is the beginning of the, the, the Correct. Start? So this would be like, yeah, like the, I guess the, the, the seeds of the actual Kirk, Spock, Enterprise. Oh, I don't know what, what you know, there's so many timelines in that universe now yeah, too. Yeah. But, but anyway, so they've got, they've, they basically settled on a complete restart, um, but they're going for the big screen in 2025. The thing though, 
which we haven't seen, and God no, only hopes that we get to see it, apparently Gladiator 2 looks like the thing. <laughs> Brian, I was thinking about that. <clears throat> they showed a trailer and people were like, wait, what? <laughs> like, they did what? Brian, supposedly this thing looked amazing. Brian, I was thinking about this earlier. Because I knew I heard I had heard something about Gladiator Two that they showed something, but I haven't heard too much. You're the first person to tell me what some of the reactions have been. But even not seeing it, Brian has me interested. Why? One, because I thought they would never do something like that, and, and Gladiator One is is just classic to me. Two, Ridley Scott is another is one of those individuals that we would probably consider a genius in what he does and he doesn't play when it comes to this uh there had to be a reason for him to come back to want to do this a story that was compelling enough for him to want to get, get in that chair again have you heard any details regarding what they saw supposedly the be the biggest things i heard were that the arena sequences looked much more elaborate and well staged than the original film, which is Certainly. kind of saying something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like yeah. practical effects, beasts, you know, like all sorts of like interactions and sword play and stuff that looked larger scale and scope than what Russell Crowe went through. That was the number one takeaway that people were kind of wowed by. To me, I will just say this. I think one of the things that what was it that Leo said in, in Django Unchained, you have my attention, <laughs> was when Denzel signed to be a supporting character. Ah, yes. When that happened, I was like, okay, this project might be something. Because that guy has no need. To be in this. No need to take on a third or fourth build role of any kind, let alone one in a Gladiator sequel. So when he agreed to do that, I was like, boy, Willie Scott must have pitched him something. That apparently was what people walked out saying, like Paramount might might have actually pulled this off. It'll be very interesting to see because you already know, Brian, it's hard to get you back to that level of excitement and <laughs> and, and and awe of a movie like the first Gladio was. <laughs> you mean the movie that won an Oscar and its leading man won an Oscar? Yeah, so you're gonna try you to always... top that, you know, twenty five years later? Okay. There was a Jedi was that oh, yeah. a couple of little things on on Star Wars uh, from from CinemaCon? So I was excited. So the the writer of Andor uh, was announced as the writer of James Mangold's Dawn of the Jedi movie. So we finally got some progress there, and I was like, oh, so you actually brought back somebody who did some good for you <laughs> to, try, to try to help out a movie that we think is very interesting. Very interesting. In its concept. First yes. first legitimate update we've heard. Um, but then we also had some additional hype for The Acolyte, obviously coming on June 4th. And I need to, I need to pull this quote because I, I was euphoric when I read it and, and sent it to you. But people asked, so Leslie Headland, who's the, the showrunner, people asked her about the trailer um, and kind of like, why does it look so martial arts heavy? Like, where did you get that from? And she flat out says the Matrix is, you know, the Matrix is basically one of the, the influential parts of it. And then she talks about Carrie and Moss in particular and said her character, her Jedi Master character is very much inspired by Trinity from the Matrix. But then she says this, quote, I personally wanted to see someone who had this highest status you could imagine in a force foo fight. <laughs> Force food. Force food fight. <laughs> there it is, Pablo. <laughs> we have been proven right. I know, right? This oh, was her pitch. God. Star Wars Kung Fu. Yes. That was Force her pitch. Food. Wow. But like when I read this, I'm like, yeah, I'm with you on this. Quote, somebody that would come in and immediately be like, oh, that's the most powerful Jedi in the room. Great. Show me that. And show me the effects and show me the choreography that reinforces that. that idea. Yes, yes. I'm, I'm there. I don't know what people are hating on this for. 
because people want to just be stuck in their own way and not see anything new. You know, there was somebody that said, do Star Wars over but better? Are you kidding me, yo? <laughs> like, really, yo? You want me to spend my money on to do something that was already done that doesn't need to be touched? What, what Was that person Zack Snyder? <laughs> We'll do a show on that in a second, but yeah. But, but seriously, like she said it, Force Fu. It's the term. It's now canon. Sorry, <laughs> people. Star Wars Kung Fu. Force Fu. Live with <laughs> May the Force Fu be with you. <laughs> force Fu. Listen, man. <laughs> if you walk into a room and you tell me, yo, Force Fu, I'll be like, what you talking about, yo? Keep going. But we'll see, man. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of all the latest updates, uh, the stuff that come up, came out of CinemaCon, Transformers, and G.I. Joe, man. I, 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 Street Fighter, that's all I can tell you. Uh, Star Trek Origins. That's always interesting to go back to the beginning. Look at what they're doing with the Jedi, which is a very interesting concept and if you go back to you know star trek origins how this all began uh that's interesting let's see how that goes brian uh but let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of all the latest and we'll see you next time on the nerd gym report the show goes on yeah!